stream. So Artemis, I'm starting the webinar. Hello everyone and welcome to today's event. I can see people are joining. It's great to see everyone coming. Thank you for joining. We've got more people joining. We'll give it a few minutes as we've just started and we have quite a few regist registrations today. So that's great. In the meantime, those of you that are joining, please feel free to say hi in the chat box and let us know where you are dialing in from. Hello, Alexandra. Some people coming from oh, Canada, New York, UK, Dublin, Paris. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Morning from Belgium, Spain. We're international. That's great. <laughs> Lots of people joining from America, so it's probably quite early there for you. So I should say good morning. Dubai, welcome. We'll do some introductions in a moment, just going to give it a couple more minutes. Hello from New York, Qatar, Hong Kong. Oh gosh, it's midnight. Sunny Florida, lovely. <laughs> Singapore, Manila. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining. Still got a lot of uh, people joining, so we'll, we'll give it a little bit more, bit more time. We're also going to um, be doing a poll as well. So please feel free to submit your information. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think this, uh, this list is a good bucket list. <laughs> Travel inspiration. Great, so I think we've, we have a couple of people joining. Seem is creeping up, but I think most of the people that are, are going to join have joined already. So um, hello everyone again, and welcome to, to today's event. Um, so thank you for joining us. The event today is called The Secrets of Customer, uh, sorry, The Secrets of Successful Customer Training. My name is Artemis, and I am a Customer Success Manager here at Lermolds. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Stella, who is our Senior Growth Marketing Manager. We also have Stephanie, who is from the support team, and she's going to be answering some of your questions. And we have two great speakers uh, joining us for today's session. The first up is Sumeru Chatterjee, who is the founder of CustomerEducation.org. That's the world's largest community of customer education professionals which currently has over 4,000 members. He has helped four startups become unicorns through learning and content. And he's also a creator himself with over 15 million plus, I think, views on YouTube and LinkedIn. So welcome to Mary. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Artemis. This is uh, incredible. You know, it's super early here in Canada. So for those of you that are joining from all over the world, staying up late, staying over work time, I really appreciate it. I always tell myself, you could have been anywhere in the world right now, but you choose to be right here uh, learning about customer training. So I appreciate it. I'll respect that time. Uh, and let's have some fun together. Next time I'll come, I'll come prepared with a little bit of music. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, there's like people all over the world. And yeah, if you'd love to join the community, you can just go to www.customereducation.com. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen. We have 25 minutes together, and I'll promise not to waste a single second of your time. But if you're here to learn about customer training and education and enabling partners and customers, uh, and you're go to market squad, then this is the right place. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Uh, and today is uh, like my uh, my camera and I had a little argument in the morning. So you know we're sort of figuring things out. 
it's one of those things where, you know, you have an argument and then you kind of like take some time off. So if my camera goes off, I'll try my best and, uh, sh uh, you know, sort of switch it, switch things around. Okay. So I'm also following the chat. I love the se sessions to be sort of interactive. Uh, you know, feel free to like ask questions while I'm presenting. Uh, so just give me a thumbs up you know, in the chat if you can, if you can see my screen and uh, let's go get started. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the chat. Um, and there's also q and I just saw that uh, Artemis had uh, opened up a QA and a as well. So uh, I'll, I'll be monitoring that as well. But we'll definitely have some uh, time in the end to uh, take any of your questions. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, okay, so if you're watching this, there's a good chance that you're in one of three categories. Either you are a knowledge uh, you know, creator and you sell knowledge as a product either by yourself um, or through institution. This is category number one. Second category you could possibly be is that you might be educating your cu customers or your partners, but you are selling some other product. But the third is you're a wild card. You're like a crazy person who likes staying up late at night to learn about customer training. So drop in the chat. Let me know if you're category one, two, or three. Either way, you're in the right place, but just helps to know uh, what the audience um, is made up of. But you'll learn some tactics and strategies that you can use um, across. So I promise you this, in the next 25 minutes, if you're here, if you're, you know, sort of fully attentive and paying, you know, 100% uh, attention. What I'll teach you is five key lessons that I learned from studying 200 plus academies. Um, I'll show you five case studies of different customer training programs where people are using customer training for uh, partner enablement, for revenue generation, for demand creation, for onboarding. Um, and I'll teach you the strategy and the tech stack uh, that you can use to deliver all of this uh, within your own organization. Okay, so I'm looking in the chat. So Nicole, Genevieve, Kristen, uh, so it's a mix of one, two, and three, one and three, some wild cards in there. I love the wild cards. You know, you can kind of do anything with uh, uh, the wild card category. And I feel like I'm a wild card category myself. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in the next 25 minutes. Before I jump in, I want to tell you a little quick story of, of, of myself. You know, I started my corporate career um, in customer support. And while I love the while I love customer support, I love talking to customers. I felt like I was sort of in this endless loop of, of filing support tickets with a dog on my lap you know, staying late in the office. So then I transitioned to a customer success role where I loved working with clients and like getting to know them, but it was one-on-one -on -one and I kind of felt like I would be stuck in these relationships and I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get out of them. And then finally I pitched and, and, and was successful in, in getting my first customer education job and building my customer academy. So uh, today, you know, I'm the founder of customereducation.org, like Artemis, uh, uh, you know, uh, gladly or, or very, um, uh, you know, humbly sort of uh, uh, announced, which is the world's largest organization for customer education professionals. I'm the founder of an academy called ShareCoro, where we have over 180,000 learners on YouTube um, and several other platforms. And I work with some of the world's best uh, brands out there. Um, so, you know, and, and what I do is, is help companies build education that really moves the needle for the business um, and for their learners. So I've worked with some of the best uh, software brands in the world, um, as well as, uh, you know, non-software brands out there as well. But I think the thing I'm most proud of is working with my dad, uh, you know, making a 63-year-old grandpa a YouTube sensation. Uh, he started a YouTube channel three years ago. Today, he has over 180,000 subscribers and 10 million views. And he teaches thousands of students all across the world. But he started with a small classroom and 15 people. And I think that's the project that I love uh, the most. And it showed me the power, like transformational power of, of education uh, where, you know, he was teaching 20 people in a classroom. Now he teaches like millions of people all over the world. And this all happened in the last three years. And I've been very uh, like honored and, and grateful to have my work <clears throat> featured in, in several publications like CBC, the Globe and Mail and the Wall Street Journal. So where is the data that I'm sharing today coming from? There are three projects that I did last year that are the source of today's data. The first one is the Customer Education Council Report, where we surveyed over 200 companies on, on what they're doing with customer education. The second um, is, a, is a repository I built called the SaaS Academy Directory, where we manually went in and broke down 50 customer academies from different SaaS brands. And the last one is the <clears throat> ACE Award, which stands for Awesomeness in Customer Education. This is where I analyzed 8,000 votes and submissions for what's going on in the world of customer education. Okay, so here's what I'm going to uh, walk you through is five key trends that you need to know if you're somebody who's educating uh, you know, your customers <clears throat> or your partners. Okay, the first one is that customer education teams within companies are growing from a small nascent team to a growth vertical, okay? 
In our survey, we found 63% of customer education teams said that they will be growing this year. And 58% of teams have actually more than one person. So A, if you're a customer education team of one, raise your hand, drop it in the chat. That's definitely where I started. But the good news is you won't be alone for a long time. Our data suggests that there's a good chance that your company is investing in customer education this year. <clears throat> the second key trend we learned is that academies today are serving more and more use cases. Five years ago, customer academies were focused on support deflection and product adoption only. And while those continue to be large use cases for, for starting a, uh, and, and building an academy, we are seeing more and more use cases, which include things like external engagement, revenue generation, demand and lead generation, internal engagement of employees, category creation. And I'll walk you through five case studies today that, that like showcase how companies are actually doing this. Number three is that uh, almost half of customer training academies also monetize in some way. So not only are they helping customers learn how to use the product and making them stickier, but they're also directly driving revenue for the organization in one way or the other. This comes in a variety of different ways. It could be subscriptions. It could be per seat. It could be some sort of like, you know, baked into the, the product um, purchase, but they are monetizing directly in some way. Number four, and this is really interesting, is that when I started in customer education seven years ago, they almost always sat under customer success within the organization. But today we are seeing newer customer education teams sit in completely different places in the organization, like marketing or even their own department. And what this does is it allows customer education and academy teams to be a lot more uh, nimble, flexible, creative, um, and bigger in the scope that they that they follow. Number five, and this one is 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 you know sort of a love hate relationship with tech stacks becoming more and more complex, um, and I'm not finding any clear winners in the online learning world, right? In terms of an LMS or some sort of platform that everyone naturally defaults to. And a lot of customer education teams are cobbling together webinar tools, LMSs, content authoring, certification, analytics tools to build their programs. So this one is, is one that I'm you know keeping my eye on as well. <clears throat> the three biggest challenges we saw from customer education teams, um, honestly, two of them are old, one of them is new. <clears throat> So the age old challenge that customer education teams is showing ROI, which is return on investment to their organizations. So that's one trend uh, or that, that continues to be a key challenge based on how complex it is to show the value of education um, and sometimes just poor quality data. The second, as I mentioned earlier, is that customer education teams are spending a lot of time wrangling different tools, migrating data from one place to the other, uh, or just sort of like, you know, uh, uh, like trudging through the mud in terms of uh, figuring out how to use their LMS and complex deployments that take three to six months. That's a, a second challenge. And the third challenge is um, this new concept of learning anywhere, right? Seven years ago, oh, there goes my camera. She's really not happy with me today. Uh, I'll switch here in just a second, but uh, let me sort of finish this point. Uh, seven years ago, you know, learning was mostly happening inside LMSs. But today, you know, people are learning everywhere they are. So you could be learning inside a TikTok app, inside a private community. You could be inside, uh, you know, uh, sort of a private Slack community or Reddit. And so customer education teams are trying to figure out how do we adapt to an environment where people are learning anywhere and not just inside academies. Um, and, and those are the three key challenges for customer education teams today. Okay, so what I'm going to do in the next five minutes is I'm going to walk you through five case studies that showcase how there are different use cases or how different companies are using customer training or education for five different purposes. Okay, and for each of them, I'll show I'll show you one slide where you can take a screenshot and you can steal their playbook. If you can guess any of the logos in this, go ahead and drop it in the chat, but I'll reveal them over the next five minutes or so. The first one is a B two B software company called Adapar. So they sell wealth management uh, solutions for the largest wealth managers in the world. The problem is they had a very complex product um, and that their CSMs were spending a lot of time onboarding customers one by one. And this was slowing down the business. The, the implementations were taking three to six months. Um, and so they were really thinking about like, how do we scale onboarding? Uh, but we also bootstrap startup. So how do we also sort of think about rep, you know, potentially generating revenue? And this is the playbook that Adapar used. They started with small in-person events. Then they worked with sales and marketing to get training seats signed into every deal. 
and then they use an LMS at the end. Okay. So I had the opportunity of starting uh, as the first customer education at Adapar. And when we started the quote unquote, the customer training program, we just started with local events. You know, we invited a few customers to learn the product together in sort of a cohort style, three-day course. The course went well. Then we started charging for it. And we were able to charge up to $1,500 per seat for people to attend the event. The question is, why were people paying $1,500 to learn a product that they'd already paid for? And the answer we found out is not that they cared that much about the training, but it was really the network they built while they were at the training where they got to meet other wealth managers. So what we did was when we saw, when we saw that the program was successful and driving revenue, we worked with sales and marketing to make sure that every new deal that got signed had at least two training seats built into the contract. Therefore, each new uh, customer that we onboarded had at least $3,000 $3, of revenue training directly attributable to the customer education team. Guess what happens when you have direct revenue towards your program? Well, you get funded pretty easily. In the first year, Adapar's training team was able to drive $300,000 of, of just straight revenue. The next year, that number grew to $800,000. It was super easy for us to go to our management and say, hey, we need an LMS to scale this. We need more trainers to bring on board and we need to expand the scope, right? It becomes easy when your customers, uh, when your executives, you know, which are also your customers, um, see value very clearly. So the business case there was super simple. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the playbook from Adapar that you can screenshot and steal if you already have an online academy. What I would suggest is try hosting a local event if you're already doing online stuff. If that goes well, convert the event into a cohort style where multiple people can come and learn with you and learn from each other predictably. Then start charging for these events and see if you can monetize. Over time, build a PNL where you can show direct revenue and cost and profit loss towards the organization. And lastly, throw in the online education as a freebie instead of making that the product. So this is Adapar's Go Local playbook that you can steal if you're already doing online learning. That's our first case study. Second case study is uh, another favorite company of mine. This time, uh, they're called Gong.io. Anybody know there? Uh, anyone know what they do or ever come across Gong? They're kind of hard to miss on social. So Gong sells a sales and uh, you know sales technology platform. Um, but the problem was they had sort of like uh, started a new way of doing sales, and they were asking salespeople to kind of change how sales is being done. And as you can imagine, that's pretty hard to do. Um, also, like Adapar, they were spending a lot of time doing onboarding one-on-one. Um, uh, -on -one. So they were like, hey, how do we get salespeople to use this new product? That's one challenge, product adoption. And the second one is how do we scale onboarding um, in, a, in, a, in a quick and efficient way? So the Gong approach is very different. Gong is all about speed over anything else. So uh, while I was at Gong, what I was able to do is I was able to create something called Gong 101 in a matter of two weeks, it was just a landing page with a bunch of videos that I shot on an iPhone and edited on Camtasia. No, like, you know, no fancy recordings, no fancy editing software, no fancy budgets, just an iPhone, some lights, uh, a landing page, and some, and some videos. And when we saw that that was gaining traction, we, I again worked with the marketing team to boost that content on social media and combine marketing content with education content to create what we called market education content. And this started going viral on LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of our posts uh, about sales tactics started going viral. But the key was we were teaching how to do sales better, not just to use Gong. So that's a key element here as well, is to make sure that you're educating on the skill, not just the product. And then once that program took off and we were able to show success, uh, you know, uh, the Gong team since then has built what I consider one of the best programs in B2B SaaS, which is the Gong Visioneer program, which combines community, education, content, support, all in one unified hub. It's the gold standard for what a customer experience program needs to look like. So that's Gong's approach. Um, and you know, they've able to, they, they grew from 12 million to 100 million in ARR in less than three years and earned over 100,000 followers on LinkedIn uh, through this like market education concept. They're one of the fastest growing SaaS companies in history. So here's the playbook from Gong that you can screenshot and apply to your own business. The first, I call this the Gong's raving fans playbook because they really rely on social media and their raving fans on social to amplify what they're doing inside the company. 
So first, start with a few simple videos on a landing page. It doesn't have to be complex. It could even be a YouTube playlist. Second is make sure that you're using social media to get traction on your content. The number one mistake I see is, is learning creators keep their content hidden as if it's some like gold mine that if, if people find that, you know, uh, the world will end. It's like, no, s put your content out on social, see what's resonating, see what's getting clicks. You know, uh, you're your own marketer. So if you're creating good content, it doesn't matter if it's like, if it's hiding in LMS, guess what? The world doesn't know about it, right? So use your raving fans on social to amplify your learning content. The third thing in order to scale is build content with partners. So instead of building content ourselves, we went to the best sales trainers and the best sales managers, and we asked them to build content for us. And if you can't afford it, and if you have that big ambition, you know, the, the gold standard is to build a unified hub, which combines education, content, support, um, you know, uh, roundtables, events, all in one hub. That's the gold standard. So that's Gong's raving fan playbook. Okay, Artemis, how am I doing on time? Just give me a thumbs up if I'm doing okay. All right. Uh, third one, any guesses on what this brand is? I'm going to take a sip here. Any guesses on the third one? All right, let's go. Everyone knows the owl. So this is our third, um, third case study, which is the language learning app that people love all over the world called Duolingo. When Duolingo started, they started teaching, uh, they had only language learning courses on just four, um, four, uh, four languages, you know, and people love them. But a lot of the users were like, hey, we want to learn Bengali or we want to learn Japanese. And the Duolingo team just didn't have the, the, the bandwidth to do it all themselves. So they were like, should we go raise money and hire a bunch of people? But then they had a better idea, right? They were like, why don't we ask our users who already know these languages to help us create the courses? Okay. So the Duolingo playbook is basically they went to their users and said, hey, we're going to start a beta, to, uh, beta program where you can apply to teach a course on Duolingo or like build a course. We'll give you the tools required and we'll show you how we build courses on different languages. And maybe you'll just do it for us for free. That was a crazy idea. I think that's a crazy idea, right? Going and asking your customers to do work for you for free. Guess what? It was super successful. Within the first year, people build languages in 40, uh, people different build courses in 40 different languages on the Duolingo app for free just because they love the platform so much, right? Duolingo gave them swag and they give them tools and give, they give them, you know, sort of like special treatment as incentives for doing that. They tested these courses with a small number, of, uh, with a small people, and they saw that the course was doing well. They over time released it to the public, okay? That's the what I call uh, the UGC playbook, which I'll show you in a second. And obviously, Duolingo success is is you know uh, is all over the internet. They've grown to 500 million users and four billion in valuation with a very very small team. And today they have you know they have courses in 40 plus languages, more than 80 percent of which are built by their own customers for free. Uh, you see that psychedelic uh, treatment? That's what happens when you take the wrong kind of mushrooms. Okay. So here's the playbook that you can steal from, uh, from Duolingo uh, and, and apply to your own business. I think it's a very powerful playbook. I call this the UGC playbook or the user-generated content playbook, okay? And there's a simple four-step process to do this. The first one is to invite your champions to contribute to your blog. It's the simplest, easiest thing to do. Second, if that goes well, upgrade it to a webinar. For example, Learn Worlds invited Shawnee today, who's a customer, to a webinar, and Shawnee's happy to be here, right? Uh, the third one, is if that goes well, convert that or invite them to do a course with you. And the fourth one, you know, if it keeps going, well, invite them to build a certification program or something, uh, you know, that is bigger in scope. But the idea here is to use your customers, use your champions, use the experts to build the content instead of building it yourself. This allows for you to scale much more rapidly. Okay, the fourth uh, playbook, uh, the fourth case study today is from a company called Drift. Uh, they are a sales chatbot for websites and they power uh, a lot of chatbots when you go to a website says, hey, welcome to our website. You know, would you like to buy anything? Okay. The problem is there are a ton of chatbots on the internet, right? If you go search for best chatbots, there's like 50 of them and all of them are free or almost free. You got many chat, you got intercom, fresh works, so many things. So the problem with Drift was they had a great product, but they were getting drowned in a sea of other chatbots. 
what they wanted to do uh, or what they needed to do was to like step out of this red ocean with a lot of fish and a lot of sharks and a lot of blood and find a blue ocean, okay? Which one that didn't have that many competitors. So as a marketing team, they decided to create a new category called conversational intelligence. So they were no longer the chatbot company. They were the conversational intelligence company. In order to like really make this happen, what Drift did was they launched something called Drift Insider, which was the number one destination for people to learn about and connect about conversational intelligence. They created courses, content, education, blog, all within one unified interface where people could go and learn about this new technology or this new industry or this new you know uh, job title or this new category and they did it with a landing page like some wistia videos some landing page very simple to get started over time they built a subscription out of it and they started charging people to access the content what they were able to do which i think is is kind of amazing is build a profitable media arm on top of a saas product so you got drift the saas product and then you got drift insider the 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 media arm which has several thousand more users or more members than the Drift the product does because people want to learn about marketing and conversational marketing uh, more than people want to learn about Drift. So the idea here, uh, you know, um, and, and again, you know, today Drift Insider Plus continues to be a monetized uh, sort of media division uh, outside of Drift the product, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Okay, so here's the playbook that you can unlock uh, from Drift and you can take a screenshot of this and apply it to your business, okay? This is what I call, you know, the category education playbook, similar to what Gong did, but in a much bigger way, okay? Here, what you really need to do is you need to look, if you're in a competitive industry or if you feel like you're in an industry where there's a lot of different competition and they all sound the same, they all do the same things, you gotta look for a blue ocean. I'll walk you through this in about five minutes. A blue ocean is where people are, where there aren't a lot of fish, there aren't a lot of sharks. Um, it's not the red ocean, okay? Here, the, the, the challenge is to teach the category skill instead of teaching the product. How can you teach conversational intelligence instead of drift? How can you teach sales intelligence instead of gong, okay? Build content with partners, influencers, and customers. Influence is a key one in this strategy. And then create a media destination that people will pay for. Your content has to be so good that people would want to pay for it just by itself. So Drift built like the Netflix of conversational intelligence or, or you know, uh, sort of conversational marketing, which I think is absolutely incredible. And they were able to build a media division um, on top of their SaaS, um, uh, SaaS application. Okay. So this is the, um, uh, th this is the category education playbook from, uh, from Drift. Okay. Uh, so Artemis is kind of giving me, you know, so the side eye in terms of timing. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to sort of uh, skip through some of the case studies, you know, again, you can find me on, on LinkedIn and I'm happy to share some of them, but I'd like to wrap up <clears throat> on how you can actually apply some of the strategies that we talked about. Okay. So the one I won't go through today is Gusto. I love what they did as well. Uh, and some of the time when we chat one-on-one -on -one or when you, you know, when you come to my community, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about my dad's academy and how he was able to go from 15 students in a classroom in Kolkata to, you know, over 180,000 subscribers on YouTube today with 10 million views. And I also got other case studies uh, on other companies like Shopify, Peloton, and Fellow, if this is something that's interesting to you. Okay. So the question is, I've, I've been talking at you for the last 15, 20 minutes straight. Okay. We walked through five case studies and five key trends. What's the pattern here, right? That's a lot of the noise. What's the signal that you can extract and apply to your business today, whether you're training educate, uh, uh, you know, customers or partners, or whether you're selling your knowledge uh, and your expertise. Here are the key takeaways, and they, these are geared towards you know, uh, customer education and training programs, but I think they apply uh, to all professionals who are in, in the knowledge market. The first one is show quick wins that matter. Okay. So one thing that, uh, you know, I was able to do at Adapar and Gong, et cetera, is figure out what are the metrics that they're talking about in the boardroom and how can you apply them to your early education goals? If your business right now is focused on new revenue, use that as your North Star. If your business is focused on retaining customers, use that as your North Star. A lot of like, the early mistake I see from new customer education professionals is that they have a separate set of goals that's focused on you know, learner engagement or whatever, whereas the boardroom is talking about something completely different, right? So it doesn't matter if your learners are engaged if your boardroom doesn't care about that. 
And if you're selling your knowledge out there, or if you're a team of one, well, guess what? You're your own boardroom, right? So focus on the things that actually matter. And as I showed you, there are a lot of different use cases for customer education today. It could be revenue generation, onboarding, product adoption, you know, driving additional value. It could be about sort of like category creation, lots of different options out there. The second, and this is sort of like the key takeaway for today's slide. So there's one slide you screenshot today. It should be about this, right? Which is about creating an, a blue ocean instead of a red sea. So red seas, you know, red because it's crowded. There's a lot of fish there and sea because it's small. Whereas a blue ocean is something that's differentiated and something that's big. So conversational intelligence is much bigger than drift. Revenue intelligence is much bigger than gong. Okay. And the best examples here of, of companies that have created new categories or really sort of like found themselves in blue oceans are companies like Drift, HubSpot, Notion, and Miro. Okay. Some of the top SaaS brands in the world. Okay. And lastly, I think this is very important, and I, you know, people don't talk about this enough, is ruthlessly prioritize speed. Okay. A lot of cu customer education teams out there spending six months buying tools and then like another nine months deploying tools. It takes them a year and a half to stand up a customer education program. That's no longer bueno. Okay. Uh, you should be able to stand up a, a, an academy in, in one or two weeks' time. So ruthlessly prioritize speed, test quickly buy tools that allow you to move quickly and then replace them when needed instead of buying tools for things that you'll need two, three, five years from now, which you may not even get to, right? So in technology, in this, you know, in today's world, speed matters over pretty much any other factor. And I see teams that move quickly win consistently, okay? And then, and, you know, there's, again, there's, there's tools out there to help, right? It, back in the day, we would take three to six months to like select a tool, long RFPs, all this stuff, uh, you know, all these like Excel sheets on all the features and checklists you need. And then it takes three months to go through procurement, then another six months to implement it. You're doing instructional design and you're doing your own video editing. No, like outsource things that need to be outsourced, like outsource editing, outsource, you know, all your like sort of research, things that don't uh, drive much value and focus on things that 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 drive value. And, and try and use lightweight tools, you know? So one of the reasons I, I, I wanted to talk to people uh, with the Learn Worlds community, and, you know, I worked with several other companies like this, like Thinkific and Kajabi and Teachable, is that I love the creator economy folks because they are changing the game for the rest of the B2B folks, right? They're showing us a new way of moving quickly, creating viral content, building an audience that I think the B2B world needs to learn from. So use tools, lightweight tools that allow you to move quickly, iterate, and then change as you need. So those are the three key takeaways. Show quick wins, design a blue ocean, and you know, ruthlessly prioritize speed. Uh, I'd love to continue this conversation with you if you thought this, uh, th this talk was interesting. Um, if you are in customer education or if you're training customers or partners, we'd love for you to join customereducation.org and you know, uh, put in an application. It's free. Uh, we have over 4,000 people who do uh, this stuff. And if you'd like the, the bonus case studies or you just want to continue chatting, you know, find me on LinkedIn. Um, I love chatting about education, community building. Uh, and just wanted to say a huge shout out to the Learn Worlds team for having me. I'm very excited to uh, hang around and talk to Shawnee about how she uses Learn Worlds uh, for her academy. But my big question for you today is what blue ocean will you find after today? Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Artemis, back to you. Thank you so much, Meru. You crammed a lot of information into a very short time, uh, super insightful, and I can see everyone was loving the content, so thank you for that. We do have a, uh, a couple of questions that were asked if you have time to, to answer those. I do, uh, but my camera doesn't, so I'm going to uh, try and figure that out. Let's, let's hear them. <laughs> no problem. So Charlie has asked, um, I'm curious about trends in, in product education with tools like Pendo, AppQs, Walnut, et cetera. Yeah, great question. Um, I, I should have uh, included that in the presentation. I, I kind of like ran out of time, to be honest. I think um, this sort of like speaks to that learning everywhere trend or learning anywhere trend that I spoke about. You know, one thing that companies are doing is saying no longer is learning in an academy. Like, why would you take somebody out of doing something, ask them to go learn something else, and then come back to doing that thing? Like, imagine you're playing football and you want to learn how to kick a ball. And the coach says, no, you actually need to go to the airport to learn how to kick a football and then come back, that would be crazy. So I'm a huge fan of, of uh, embedded learning or just-in-time learning uh, and, and digital pro, pro, uh, like dApps. They're called digital adoption products or digital adoption platforms. There's Pendo, WalkMe, IORA, there's a bunch of them. But again, I would say like test and iterate. Um, 
people are sort of getting tired of pop-ups. So, you know, on one end, I like dApps. On the other end, I hate pop-ups. Like I literally hate pop-ups. So if I get a pop-up while I'm trying to do something, the first thing I do is say XO. So what I would do is like try a tool, test it with 25% of your audience, see if it's getting, you know, the traction and then roll it out. So I would say try an experimentation approach, uh, but I, I generally like the strategy. Great, thank you. And Shiv has asked a great question. If you're a team of one in customer education, what are your thoughts on what aspects of the hub should be prioritized? So webinar, academy, support, et cetera. Uh, firstly, Shiv, shout out to you for queuing my, my registration links and, and for letting me know that they weren't working. So thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, the question is, if you're a team of one, what should you prioritize? Okay, uh, two things. One of them, and this is all like my secret playbook, is you yourself should have some extra like executive, like an EA support person. Right? The one thing I did early in my career is I just had somebody in India be my EA, do all the tasks that I didn't want to do. Okay. It does, it's not very expensive. It's a few hundred dollars a month, but it'll change the way you think about doing your job, right? Because if you're paying somebody else to do parts of your job that you don't love, then you can actually focus on that. So that's one sort of like random advice that I would like highly recommend is, is get an EA who takes away a lot of like the customer education, like burdens of like editing videos and like, you know, combining Zoom recordings and like a lot of stuff that just like takes up a lot of time. That's number one. Number two is if you're going to focus on the hub, go back to that boardroom strategy, right? Figure out what the boardroom, key boardroom metric is right now. And I can tell you after one year of a recession, those numbers, those metrics have changed. Things I was hearing from my bosses one year ago, I'm no longer hearing, right? One year ago, I was working at venture back SaaS startups, they were like growth at all costs, go, go do whatever. Today they're saying, no, we got to defend every dollar. We got to earn new dollars. So go back to that boardroom metric and then apply to education. If you need help, you know, DM me on LinkedIn. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm aware of the time. So we're going to move on to Shawnee, but thank you so much again uh, for your participation and all those insights. Thank Great. you so much. Um, and now to introduce Shawnee. So Shawnee is a go-to expert for building and instituting e-learning paths, processes, and course curriculum at Keyflow, which is a company that helps small to medium enterprises drive sales growth with partnerships. She creates markets and distributes courses whilst using metrics and data to increase revenue opportunities. So welcome Shawnee and thank you for taking part in today's event. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, that was incredible. That was so much information. I feel like I'm going to have to rewatch that like five times. So thank you so much. <laughs> Great. Well, um, I'm going to be asking Shawnee some questions about how she came to Learn Worlds and how she came to start building an academy. So I think one of the, uh, the best places to start is if you could just give us a short introduction into Keyflow and exactly what its offering is. Yeah, of course. So Keyflow is a PRM platform, which is a partnership relationship management platform, but we actually like to think of ourselves more as a uh, partner success platform. So we're, our goal really is to try to make partnership professionals like the best version of themselves that they can be, the best version of the program it can be by working with every stage of the partnership journey. And um, also providing, obviously, like the, the Keyflow Academy and a ton of great content to help them uh, reach at their North Star metrics. Perfect. Thank you. And um, would you be able to just give us a bit more of an insight into your online academy and in particular, what role you have played in creating and maintaining that? Sure. Yeah. And I want to be totally transparent with everybody here that... Um, I've worked in education for a long time. I worked in e-education and this was the first academy that I built for B2B SaaS companies. So this has been a really big learning experience for me and I'm happy to answer questions or give some insight from that kind of point of view. If anyone wants to reach out to me um, on the chat or in, on LinkedIn, please feel free to do that. But um yeah, so I am. I, my title is actually head of marketing and partner marketing. So I do like everything. We are a small bootstrap startup, and um, I've basically built the academy from the ground up. So writing course curriculum, figuring out you know all the tools and great features and learn worlds. Um, you know, we film the courses, we edit them. We're really doing everything in house at this point. 
And um, so far we have five courses um, that are all, all available just to our customers and they will be going public. I'm hoping actually next week. Um, so keep an eye out for that. If you are in the partnership industry, that will, that will be a resource available to you um, very shortly, but yeah, I've done, I've wear a lot of hats and I've done pretty much everything. <laughs> Great. And when you first started to think about creating a, an academy, were there any specific pain points that you were facing that you felt an academy would solve? Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, I feel like, um, actually I, the p- partnerships teams and customer education teams, I feel like probably struggle, have a, similar struggles in a lot of ways and that they are smaller teams that often don't have that high up buy-in from the, the execs or, you know, the things they're really like, they're really handling everything on their own. So it's difficult for them to be able to navigate. How can I get the most out of this partner program? How can I show those results, those quick wins? Um, how can I actually get my partners to use the, use the tools that like, like Keyflow that I've invested so much time and energy in? So we're, we are really focused um, on not just teaching the product, like how you're getting the most out of, out of Keyflow, um, but also the skills behind it. So how to drive up partner engagement, how to activate partners, what is a good partner onboarding pipeline look like? Um, what metrics you should be following? What does partner marketing campaigns look like? You know, so we're really trying to, like I said, make partners, um, the partner professionals, the best versions of themselves so that they can win and then therefore we can win. And that was a big pain point we were coming across just in terms of, you know, how do we, how do we help out our customers? You know, we're hearing the same sort of struggles that they're facing. So we're taking on those struggles as well. And um, an academy seemed like the best, uh, you know, answer for that, best solution for that. Great. And I'm, I'm curious to know, especially with the background that you have in education, what kind of um, learning activities or training content did you lean towards when you were building your courses? I think the key for me, the key thing and something that I was so drawn to with Learn Worlds is um, you definitely need to think about diversity in not just the content that you are sharing, um, right? So not just the type of mediums that you're using, but also um, diversity in learners. So we are, we have an international customer base and I loved that you can use um, the interactive transcripts, you can create closed captioning, you know, these things that people that are non-native English speakers or are differently abled or disabled, might not be able to access the content in the way that they they could. And that was something that was really important to me with an education background. We aren't really using like the quizzes and stuff yet. That doesn't really um, meet our customer base, but we do use surveys. And I think that that is always such an important part of customer education is like actually talking to the people that you're educating, getting their feedback. And that was another reason why we wanted to keep it just for our customers in the beginning, sort of like a soft rollout (laughs) um, before we went public so that we can sort of test and improve and see, you know, what people are liking or disliking and make adjustments as needed. Yeah, perfect. And I think that's such a good point about creating content that's inclusive of your, your whole audience, especially when you are targeting multiple markets and um, having a wide variety of learning activities as well to keep things engaging and, and interesting. Yeah, we all learn differently. So try to try to accommodate that as much as possible. Definitely. And are there any other features in particular within the the platform that you found you were utilizing a lot or were very important for you in creating a customer education academy? Um, I'd say just I love the course manager and and I actually have it. I have our academy app and I'm happy to share that with you so people can see what it looks like sort of behind the scenes. but I really love that this is the course player. So this is what the students or the customers are going to see. And we have been able to really organize it in a very intuitive way. So you'll see like this is one of our larger courses. And this is sort of like an onboarding course. And there's eight sections, but there's 22 videos. There's PDFs. There's templates. There's links. 
Um, you can organize that. People know exactly where they need to go, you know, if they're building out their partner program. And then on top of that, there is a discussion tab. So people can actually ask questions to us directly or ask questions to other learners, which I feel like the success of anything really in business, but specific, specifically in the partnership space, has to be built around this idea of community and education is a big part of that. So those, those two things going hand in hand, I think are really important. Definitely. Perfect. And then in terms of the next steps, have you thought about any goals for the school moving forward? I know you're just about to launch, but maybe in the long term, have you thought about how you could expand what you're doing with the academy? Yes. Yeah. So many things. I, I want to do so many things, but um, yeah, obviously the first goal is to get it public, which hopefully I, it will happen next week. And then I'd say um, some, you know, sort of mid range goals. I'd really like to see more collaboration on, on the academy, um, you know, inviting people in to guest teach courses, again, building that, that sense of community that sense of partnership that obviously we are so focused on. Um, and also I would really love to take advantage of the app feature. Um, I think Sumo had a really good point on um, that ability to be able to learn wherever you are, where like legit wherever you are. So if you are, um, if you have access to the Academy on app, you can watch it on the subway. You can, you know, do anything anywhere. And I think that will be really powerful once we get to that point. Perfect. Very exciting. Great. great. Well, thank you so much, Shawnee. Um, that was really insightful. And it's it was great to see you share what you've done with the Academy as well. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Shawnee has done an amazing job building her Academy and we're super excited <laughs> to see it launch fully. Uh, you've, done, you've added so much content and you've organized it and structured it in such a comprehensive way that I think it's going to go off, get off to a flying start. Um, let me just check whether we've got any questions for you as well from the audience. We've got some here. Okay. And um, Serene, I, I don't know if that's to me, but absolutely. <laughs> you can reach out to me on LinkedIn if you want to exchange contact info. Great. Does anyone ha have any uh, questions more specific to um, how Shawnee's built her academy and what she's doing? Don't oh. be shy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> As she mentioned, feel free to connect with her. I think it was on LinkedIn you mentioned, so uh, people might want to reach out for ideas. Likewise, yes. customer education chat's a really great place. So I don't know, Shawnee, if you're in, in that, uh, in Sumeru's um, Slack group that he's created, but... No, I'm not, but I would love to be. Perfect. So yeah, maybe... Consider this my application. <laughs> <laughs> pop, some, pop some of your ideas there I'm sure I know a lot of the people there are, are looking for inspiration and guidance so they definitely would love to hear more okay uh, so thank you so much it doesn't look like we've got any questions specific I'm oh. we've got a couple of questions um yes, one actually that I'm really interested in, same one from Charlie is uh Shine, can you talk a little bit about the implementation because uh, um, I'm actually curious about that. And we, I spoke a little bit about, you know, sort of speed there, but um, how did you go about that? So the implementation in terms of what's coming or just for the no, customers? Off, right off now? like the LearnWorlds platform, like off the tool, the first time you were using it. Um, so it was, Artemis was really great, like really walking me through all of like how to use the tool. And then from there, I think it was just, um, Really kind, I mean, because we are a small team and I think this is something that I've, you know, from people, my colleagues that I've talked to that people have tried to do this in the past and failed, don't try to do everything at once, right? Um, you can't do everything, especially if you're a small team. So really, like you were saying, Timo, like to find that North Star, to find the thing that makes the most sense for your team and your customers, really focus on those things. For us, the first thing was the getting started with Keyflow course. We knew we needed a very extensive course to walk people through step-by-step, step, not just how to use the product, but like every phase of building out a partner program, what that looks like hand in hand with the product. So that was the big first milestone was getting that course done. And then after that, it has been um, about talking with customers directly. I've done a ton of customer in interviews over the past few months 
And just hearing the language, hearing the pain points that they're dealing with directly, how they're speaking about it, and then transforming that in, you know, into course curriculum. Um, so taking, taking these things, making them into bite-sized courses and spreading that out to, into different learning paths. Um, right now we're following the sort of customer or partnership journey as our sort of guide for these learning paths, but really making sure that the customers are able to hear and see that their own issues, their own language mirrored back in those courses. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. We do have another question from Arthur. He's asking if you're planning on charging for training. No. Right now, everything, we want to just really add value to the community. Um, maybe eventually, though, we have talked about a certification course um, on Keyflow eventually. Maybe that would be something that would be paid. Um, but as I said, our, our big goal is to really support partnership people like 360 support. So we have a really interactive customer success team. We have the academy, we have our content, and we have the product. And we just want that to be accessible to anybody who wants to access it. Great, thank you. And we do have one more question. Um, how do you determine the split of product specific versus non-product in your academy? This is something that is at, I think, I think that if, how do I want to say this? Our sort of philosophy around this is Keyflow is, um, we don't want to like push the product too much, right? The first, the first goal really is to just bring value to this community. So if there's a way that our product can do that also, then we will highlight it. Um, but it's not going to be the center focus. It's going to be like the cherry on top of this, of this other thing, um, this other strategy, this other how to, whatever, whatever that looks like. Um, so I'd say, you know, it's like finding that balance because really, um, in my experience and especially in the partnerships community, I feel like people don't want, if you try to push product too much, they're not going to be interested. It's kind of like what Sumo was saying about getting a pop-up, like, okay, see you later. We don't want that. We want to build trust with the community. We want to, um, really, you know, prove that we are a great resource for partnership strategy materials and Keyflow can and should be a part of that strategy, but, um, we're not going to push that too hard. Makes sense. And yeah. uh, we do have one last question. I think there is time. So um, does the Academy replace or supplement your help center? It's, I, I would say it supplements it. Um, we have, we do have a help center that is a little bit more technical. Um, and then we have the Academy, which is a little bit more strategical. So it's, I think it helps kind of balance it out because what we're seeing too is that you know, these one person partnership teams, two person partnership teams, they're being asked to handle all, all of the, all of the partnership stuff. Um, whereas it should maybe it probably in like a perfect world should be split up uh, from like five to 10 people. So how can we like balance all of that, that kind of stuff with our different resources and, um, the Academy helps to do that. Great. Well, thank you so much, Shawnee, for walking us through your experience with Learn Worlds and give us, giving us some insight into how you created your school. Um, and good luck with the launch. We're really excited to see how it goes. Thank you. Yeah, stay tuned, everyone. And I'll put my LinkedIn on the chat. So if you want to add me, please, please do. Perfect. And thank you so much for having me, Artemis. I really no, appreciate we're it. so glad to have you, have you both. Um, and I'm going to take over now and just jump into the uh, Learn Worlds platform and show you some of the main features that you might want to consider when you're looking to create a customer education academy. And so on that note, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So the first thing that you're probably going to take a look at when it comes to building an academy is the website design. And we have you covered at Learn Worlds within the platform. We've equipped you with all the tools necessary to get started really quickly. As Sumero mentioned, uh, time is of essence. And so what we've done for you is created templates that you can start to work off of, that you can draw inspiration from. And so there's lots of different templates that you can utilize. 
And we also have specific segment templates. And in relation to today's session, we have custom education ones. We also have a site flavors feature, which allows you to play around with different versions of your website without actually altering the main environment. So let's say you want to tweak the design or the branding or create a different version based on an occasion or um, anything really, you can create a different site flavor and then activate it and then jump back into your main one later down the line. And let's jump into the site builder itself. So this is where you'll be able to really customize your pages and the content that you are putting out there. So we're going to take this homepage as an example. This is one of the templates and you can edit this. So I've selected this template. And then what I would do as a creator is go in and replace the content with my own. I might decide to switch things around so you can move elements and you can replace them or add in new ones. And we also have sections that you can then go ahead and add in. So again, really saving you time so that you don't have to sit there and create everything from scratch. Uh, if you want to, you do have the option. You can create your own uh, template and start from there if you're feeling creative and you've got the time on your hands. Uh, but we've got lots of different widgets that will allow you to display your content in really engaging and uh, interactive ways. So for example, we have this course cards widget, which allows you to display your products. We've got events calendar. So if you're someone that hosts live sessions, you can display your events nice and clearly for your users to register. There's forms. If you want to create marketing forms that you place on your pages, you can embed content. So you can bring other content from other platforms here. For example, you may already have some YouTube videos. So you might want to place those on your page instead of creating them from scratch. So there's lots of different things that you can do here. We've also released parallax effects. So really allowing you to draw attention to specific areas of your page and also modernize the, the page as well. It gives it a really nice effect. So lots of different um, sections there. And then of course you can also add in individual widgets. So we have text and animations. You can attach files for your users to download, buttons that redirect your users elsewhere in the school or perhaps to an external website. If you have the app, you can add in the download app buttons. Again, events, forms, icons, the list goes on. So you have lots of resource to really create uh, beautiful pages. We then have uh, the Theme Explorer, which helps you to fully brand your school. So of course you'll probably have another website maybe, um, or you'll definitely have a brand and you want to align your academy with those. So the first thing that you probably look at is your colors and your typography. So you can add those in and you can also fully white label your school. Uh, on the most basic level, that would be adding your logo and your favicon. And then you can also set up a custom domain. So really removing the low mods affiliation and making sure that your school is fully white labeled and aligns with the rest of your product. The next thing that we would take a look at is the course structure. And this is gonna be the most important part of your school. This is all your content. This is what your learners are going to be taking away essentially from the whole experience. So if we jump into the course. Uh, so. Shawnee earlier showed you what a user will see in the course player, and you can view that using a preview function. So super handy when you're building content and you want to check what the user is going to be seeing. This is the back end of it, and this is where you're going to be able to start to add in all your learning activities. So just to show you some of the ones that are available, we've got multimedia learning activities. So we have video. And what's really great about our video learning activity is that it has an interactive editor. So you're able to go in and add in your video and then on top, add in text. You can add in images, interactions, anything that will really support the content that you're trying to get across in your video and also make it a more engaging experience for your users. We also have eBooks and PDFs, SCORM. Uh, so you'll notice with some of these learning activities, audio, YouTube, SoundCloud, it really enables you to bring content that you have in other platforms into your school. So you're consolidating it and having it all in one place. Um, and I think that's really important when you're a creator, you want to have it all in one place and have a really streamlined user experience for yourself and also for your learners. 
We also have the live session. So we teamed up with Zoom, Calendly and WebEx to allow you to host your meetings, your webinars, your one-to-one -one and one-to-group sessions directly in the school. We then have our assessments. So assessments are a really great way for users to check their knowledge and also to keep them engaged and make sure they're actually uh, taking in the material that you have set out for them. And so with the assessment builder, you can create both graded and non-graded assessments and you have a selection of, I think it's about 16 uh, different question types that you can see here. You can mix and match those and make them really engaging for your users. You can also enrich them further by adding in extra content. So you can see here we've got content blocks. So that might be text or image, again, to support the assessments. We then have forms. So touched upon this earlier, Shawnee's mentioned that she's using these. Super important to be getting feedback from your users as to how they're finding the whole experience. This way you can identify what's working great, what gaps there are, so that you can then fill them. We also have certificates and you can create custom certificates and allow your users to share these to social media. So a really great motivator for your users and also a great brand awareness exercise for you. And then lastly, we have um, embed and external links. So again, just allowing you to bring that content into one place and you can utilize this in different ways. It might even be that you have resources. So perhaps you do have uh, a support library link that in right at the end of the course as resources to allow your users to see what else is available to them. So that's your courses and then moving on, once you get your academy up and running, one of the most powerful features that you're going to be needing to utilize is reporting. It's so important to be able to track how your users are doing, how your courses are performing, and more often than not, you may have other stakeholders that you need to report to. And so this is where our automated reports feature is going to come in really handy. So I'm going to jump back into my test environment to show you what that looks like. So first up, we have the user progress. And what's really great about this is we offer 77 filters that you can use. You can mix and match these. You can work with just one. And you can basically build your reports depending on what metrics you're looking to pull. And then you can save these segments. So for example, you might want to have users that are at risk. This is actually one that we've already um, preset for you, but let's say it wasn't, you would apply your filter and then here are your users. You can save this, you can export it, and you can also schedule it to go out uh, as an automated report. And you can do this for different user groups to different stakeholders. So you would set this up. It's an email that goes out with an Excel attachment. You select the frequency and the time zone and the period. And essentially, every so often, depending on the settings that you've applied here, your stakeholders will receive that report. You might also decide that you need to have insight on specific user groups or case scenarios, and you don't have the time to come in and manually pull this information together, export it, and then review it. So you could also set this up for yourself. We also have course insights. So this is gonna show you how your courses are performing. Again, super important. So you have some high level metrics here in the form of graphs and my school only has one course at this time. So not much data here, but some really great quick metrics that you can pull. When you have the time to deep dive in further, you can go into the all courses tab and then delve into the course itself. So. We have some overall metrics, again, coupled with graphs here. So you'll be able to see all of these different reports that we've got. Um, one of the most valuable parts of the platform, in, in my opinion, is the activities breakdown, because engagement is going to be really important when you're delivering your learning. And this is really gonna give you the insight as to what learning activities your users are responding to, and also which part of the courses they're spending more time on, which part they're dropping off at, so it will give you that insight to allow you to alter that content so that you can improve the, the user experience. 
So that was the report center. Then moving on, we have tags. So we will be touching on reporting again, but tags is one of our most powerful features in the platform. Um, there are so many ways that you can add tags both manually and automatically. And tags really allow you to segment your user groups, to personalize the user journeys and to, to manage that process too. So if I jump back into the site builder, I'll show you exactly how you can do that. In fact, let me go here. So let's say that we have, we're working, we're a B2B company and we have customers that are in another company and we've got company A, company B and so forth. So that's one of our most used case scenarios. So we've added the tags company A and B and so forth to each group. And I've created this section and it's specifically content for company A. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I've created it, I can then apply the tag visibility rule so that it's only visible to my company A tag. And I don't actually have a company A tag here, but let's say my company is called Hilton. So only the users with the Hilton tag will actually now be able to see this content. And so you can build up your pages this way. And this really allows you to create a more personalized and customized experience for those different user groups. One of the most popular ways that you could use this is with the course card widget. So you might have courses that are specific to different user groups. So you could highlight this as these are the courses recommended for you. These are the courses recommended for you. Again, really allowing you to customize their experience. We also have a new feature that we've just released. It's a really exciting release and it's multiple after login pages. Currently, when your users um, sign into the school, they'll be redirected to an after login page. And typically it's the same page for every user. But with the new feature that we have just released, you're able to create different after login pages based on a user's tag. So again, really allowing you to customize their experience. For example, using the Hilton tag that we just looked at, I could redirect my users to a page just for the Hilton users, which has specific information about them. It has the courses I'd recommend uh, to them um, and anything else. It might have redirections specifically for them. It might be a button that takes them elsewhere. So you can get really creative with this. Then lastly, and again, just jumping back into the report center, where are we? Here we go. If we go into the user progress, one of the, again, filters that you can use here is tags. So if I select tags there and choose my Hilton tag, I'm pulling again, all the users here. So another scenario where you might want to use scheduled reports, you might have a stakeholder who is part of that Hilton company and they need to have insight on how their cohort's doing. So you can just set up a scheduled report and you don't really have to do anything else after that, it just goes out automatically. Another important uh, feature of uh, a customer education academy is being able to connect all of your tech stack. And we have got you covered here with our native integrations, API and SSO. And um, so these are some of the most popular features amongst our current customer education audience. Um, and with good reason. So if we jump into the integrations tab, typically you will have different tools that you want to work with. Um, we see a lot of customer education customers using analytical ones. So you can use the native integration for Google Analytics, Tag Manager, Mixpanel. There's different ones here, Face Facebook Pixel. We also have customer service ones. So for example, you may be using Zendesk on your main website and you might want to bring it over to the school as well. So you can set that up. We also have email marketing integrations as well. So you'll be able to, if you've got any of these platforms, directly integrate them into the school. We have growth tools as well. So HubSpot is, is part of this, Sumo and so on. We mentioned the live sessions earlier. So Zoom, WebEx and Calendly. And we also have a direct integration with Zapier. We have webhooks and we have API. So lots of option there. Just to give you some insight, these are some of the API calls that we have. I think it's definitely over 60. So there's a lot here uh, that you'll be able to utilize. Okay. Oh, and then lastly, we have SSO. So uh, if your users are already logging into another platform, you don't want to cause friction in their user journey and have them create a new account for the academy. So in which case you can create a uh, custom SSO uh, material. So 
This way your users will be able to log in with their credentials, creating a more streamlined journey. And then lastly, we have the mobile app. So I know that this has been spoken about already, but a really great way to allow your users to be learning on the go. Um, and I'll just jump in to show you what it looks like in the back end in the platform. So you're able to build your app without the use of code, and you would just follow these screens. Just to give you an insight into kind of what the final product could look like, you'll be able to see these images. So this is one of the apps that we've created for our academy. So you'll be able to customize that whole journey. <clears throat> and one of the most powerful features of the app is the push notifications. So this is a really great way for you to be able to connect with your users and keep them engaged by sending them out uh, event information, updates about the company, it could be, could be anything. So uh, a really powerful feature there. And we also maintain the app for you. So it's a really easy process. You don't need any prior mobile app experience to get started. Okay, so that was the main features. It was a very quick overview of everything. So thank you for staying tuned. Um, let me just see if there are any questions for, if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the Q&A function uh, if they're related to the Academy or any other features that you might like to see. Okay, it doesn't look like we've got any, I'm just gonna, oh. So we do support other languages and I'll jump back into the Academy to show you where that's it. So if we go into site language. So this is, these are the languages that we support and hopefully you can see the drop down. So Portuguese, German, Spanish, French, Greek, Italian, Dutch, Chinese and Japanese. And if your language is not here, you are able to add it in in the interface setting. So all of the language across the school sits here and you can make your edits on the right hand side. So there currently isn't a Salesforce integration, but you are able to connect Salesforce using um, either Zapier or the API. Are there any recent oh, are there any recent studies on live versus on demand? Currently have live training courses for the on demand. Yes, I would recommend that uh, because live is a really great way to get your users engaged. However, it doesn't always work for everyone. And one of the things that I find with the users, the customers that we currently have in this segment is that they are often targeting more than one market or more than one time zone. And so live isn't going to cater to everyone. So definitely take that approach where you can have the recording uploaded after. This is one of the features that we've just released as well. So it's really nice and easy to set up in the platform. Okay, I don't think there are any other questions from what I can see. So I'm now gonna move on. I also just wanted to show you, oh, how do I proceed? Okay, great. Well, if you're interested in uh, playing around with the platform, seeing you know what's available, then please feel free to create a free trial. And here's the URL. As I mentioned, um, we will be sharing this recording with everyone that's registered after after the probably tomorrow. Um, we also have an offer for new customers as well, so you can uh, take take that if you're interested in purchasing the platform. Okay, and then we also have some free resources that you can utilize as well. So you'll be able to go and check out our other webinars, our academy, and we also have an online academy that you can uh, take a look at for other courses. Great, so there is another question. Do you have a whiteboard presentation option while filming within the app? Oh, that's from that's from someone at LearnWorld, so I'll leave that one. Um, but thank you, everyone, for for taking part in today's webinar. I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, thank you so much, Shawnee and Sumeru, for for your participation and your insights. I know everyone found it super interesting and insightful. Um, and yeah, thank you for everyone for sticking around. Thank, thank you so much for having us.
Yes, take thank care. you. It was really fun. I really appreciate it. Take care, Bye, everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye. Ah. <sighs> <laughs>